So hello everyone, my name is Abel Raberin. Uh, I'm an international wealth manager and expert in Bitcoin, and I'm excited to bring you fresh content and deep insight through this podcast. So I'm happy to join this high level team. So we have, uh, as you know, one risk manager, a fund manager, and a marketing expert. So together we'll explore the full spectrum of the crypto space offering diverse perspectives that cover everything from risk management to investment knowledge and marketing expertise. Uh, but everything here will be uh, educational content only. So for this episode, I'm thrilled to sit down with Maxim. Hi, Maxim. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so this conversation um, is an interview where you will know more about Maxim, uh, marketing and the behind the scenes of crypto projects and uh, many other things. Can you share a bit about uh, your early career before crypto? Yeah, so uh, before crypto, I was working more in various industry, mainly sports, so it was quite different, right? Um, and uh, the only link I had with, uh, I, I think, crypto was more the macroeconomy uh, courses that I followed at the university. Okay. Uh, because, yeah, within the sport industry, not much link uh, to crypto, to be honest. Um, I definitely switched, uh, into crypto in, uh, yeah, 2017. The first time I heard about it was in 2016, but didn't really pay much attention to it. One of my friends was investing into it already, but he was like a super, uh, yeah, tech entrepreneur. And at this stage, it was like just, um, yeah, nothing else than just nerd stuff <laughs> at that stage. I, I really didn't get it, to be honest. It was talking about me about like mining and how Bitcoin was like using blockchain, decentralized ledger technology. Like that was like nothing I could really grasp. Okay. So the first, the first thing was Bitcoin. The first crypto things you, you heard? Yeah, Bitcoin and Ether, because Ether yeah. was already there. And, uh, yeah, my friend was, uh, investing in mining mostly. Okay. So he has mining rigs and it was mining, uh, yeah, Bitcoin and Ether. So I heard okay. about, yeah, both at the same time. Yeah. Okay. And, and so what, um, uh, drew you to, to the crypto? What was the time and the thing when you said, yeah, I want to work in, in crypto and how was the, the transition? So before working into crypto, I got really hooked by the blockchain technology because when I followed like macroeconomic courses, one thing that I really couldn't, you know, uh, understand is like, it's the uh, constant growth that we need to sustain mm. the economic model. Okay. And when I was following those masters, uh, I was in my master degree, especially when I studied in the US and I always had the same question, like what happens if growth like goes down? What do we do? And the only answer was like, oh, we just inject more money into the just system. Printing. But it was like super easy to just un understand the consequences. Like you don't need to study and have a PhD in economic mm. to understand that. Like yeah. the more you print money, the more you devaluate the currency. Yeah. And if you do that, like again, again, and again, you have inflation and basically you have this macroeconomic situation we're in where we, we, we just need stimulus yeah. either through QE or war or whatever it is. We need to inject money yeah. to keep the, uh, yeah, the economy, uh, to just avoid the economy to yeah. collapse yeah. at some yeah. point. That's where we are. Mm -hmm. And when I understood that, I was like, yo, Bitcoin is really something different. Like blockchain technology, this peer to peer. A currency, I think it can work. Uh, I'm not an engineer, so it took me time to really understand. But for me, the fact that we can have like a fixed supply yeah. and rules that are, you know, uh, embedded in the changed. code. Yeah, they can't, can't be changed, be changed right? Yeah. They are written in stone. Yeah. I mean, they can be changed, but you have the old consensus of the algorithm of Bitcoin. Yeah. So just to make changes, it's super difficult. Yeah. And there is no like uh, intermediaries. Mm -hmm. So you cannot change the rule because today government, central bank, they can change the rule if they want to yeah. without our approval, by the way. They yeah. just need to pass law and if they can pass it. Uh, they will do it with force. So they always have way in the constitution to make it happen. Yeah. And, and, and at, it was really different. Yeah. At that point, uh, when you were in your master degree, uh, when you heard about how money works, and did you have back then some friends who understand it or it was just you? 
I, I felt alone, to yeah. be honest, because everyone was just like studying okay. the same stuff yeah. and said, yes, that, that's the way it works. That's how it should work. And nobody was like seeing the main problem of it. Okay. Just, yeah. I, I cannot say I felt alone, but very few people understood it. Yeah. yeah. So in 2017, you decided to transition to a crypto job? Yeah, not directly because finance was really new to me. Yeah. Um, so I started to invest in, in crypto, Bitcoin, Ethereum, ICO. I was the, uh, it was during the bull run. So yeah. for me, it was still, I was late in the bull run, of course, like yeah. many people, right? Sweet. When you start heard about like crypto assets, you start investing at the top. Yeah. Uh, the good thing is I was able to, you know, not lose much money and then make my money back, uh, in 2018, 2019, but I really decided to yeah shift to crypto in 2020 okay. uh, because yeah I, I thought I had enough knowledge in the industry to really uh, be useful for a company. So I was lucky enough to start working for Swissborg in Lausanne at that time. Okay, so they were launching their crypto app and uh, it's an exchange. Yeah, and um, yeah, I was um, there during the bear market and uh, enjoyed working uh, in this industry during the bull run yeah 2020 2021 okay. till mid 2022 then the market collapsed once again <laughs> you know with the yeah the terra luna crash yeah then ftx and uh, it was the same music again um i have to say okay so um, how was your experience with sysborg and what what did you do uh, there I was working as a marketing manager and mostly growth. So my main goal was just to promote the exchange, try to attract as many investors as possible. But I think they have a good philosophy. So yeah. the educational part is very important. That uh, was and is still very important at Swissborg. Yeah. I try to educate people. We try to offer a way to invest early in crypto and different projects as well, because there is I see it like as a way for many people to just, instead of losing money, just to try to save what they have if you yeah. invest wisely. And uh, crypto, yeah, you, you say, you say, yeah, in crypto in general, in general. The, the way I see it, it's because I don't like marketing just to push people and make them invest and lose money. So yeah. Yeah. of course you try to have this educational approach to say, yeah, you should yeah, like dollar cost averaging and mm. have a strategy and so on. But we're, I was not financial advisor and we're not, yeah. uh, we were not at Swissborg. But yeah, my job was mostly yeah, to promote the exchange, help to shape product and make sure uh, the asset we were uh, kind of listing were safe and so on. Okay, so um, about this uh, educational part, um, is that what uh, drew you to Not Your Money podcast or what, what, what was the, the thing and the story with, with this podcast? Yeah, Not Your Money was born thanks to a former colleague uh, from Swissborg, uh, Francesco Sismondini. Um, he was like the risk officer over there. Um, got laid off, unfortunately, <laughs> due okay. to the bear market, bear market. Uh, just like myself a, a little bit later on, like six months is later. Yeah. But the, the main goal was really to share knowledge. Uh, we feel like uh, he had the same impression and I still have the same today, even though there are more people that are investing in crypto. Yeah. Uh, there are very few people who understand the global um, macroeconomic situation we are in. Yeah. And with not your money, we wanted to create first free content. Yeah. to try to reach out to people and ex explain them uh, what the problem we're facing and why crypto is an alternative also to yeah, yeah. save your wealth plan somehow. B. Plan B. Yeah, it's <laughs> plan B. And also, um, you know, still as of today, many people will relate, will just listen to the media and say crypto is a scam, crypto mm -hmm. is for terrorists, crypto is the waste of energy, crypto is like xyz which is uh yeah actually really false yeah the only way to um explain to people and change their mind it's education i education. guess so you yeah. try to produce educational content um, yeah that was the wonderful goal. wonderful and he, he, you said um, two minutes ago that uh, you 
guys been laid off uh, after the, the yeah. market crash. So for the audience uh, to know uh, the behind the scenes of crypto, that's something they, if they want to work in crypto, they, they should know how, they, how it works. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to blame crypto too much okay. because you have the same trend in startup in general, right? Okay. If you take startup today, you work for a startup like six months later, you know, they might close the door because they are running out of money. It can happen uh, in uh, any field in startup. I have many friends who work, you know, uh, not in AI because AI is pretty hype right now. So they are still there. getting funding. <laughs> but yeah, you had, uh, at some point, everyone was launching new social media during, you know, 2012, 2014. And you had so many startup breeding the next, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Facebook and so on. Uh, you had the same during, uh, you know, uh, the, the 2000 with, um, uh, search engine. Okay wanting to build the next Google or <laughs> building the next Amazon and so on. Uh, mm. So you have trends and of course you have many people trying to launch their product. And unfortunately, 90, 95% of them will just shut down before three years. So, um, and yeah, um, so that, 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 that's how it is. Could, could you say, uh, could, could we say that crypto projects um, in general can be assimilated to a startup or, uh, or tech? startup yeah i would even say fintech like fintech. Yeah, yeah or uh, there are like financial technology or new technological finance you can call them <laughs> fintech <laughs> some people uh, like tech me. fin because they say it's technology <laughs> before finance <laughs> but yeah one way or the other uh, i think it's the startup trend but it's a bit more brutal of course because all your funding or depending of the the management, the treasury management of your company, yeah, yeah. your company can lose it all. And it yeah. happens with uh, Terra Luna, it happened with uh, FTX, like yeah. some project really lose their phone. So mm -hmm. it's even, I would say, like more risky, but yeah, uh, if you, yeah, that, that's, you have to take it or leave it out. <laughs> <to say. laughs> that's the game. Yeah. So um, can you tell us more about uh, your new position and uh, the company you work? Yeah, sure. So I've joined a new company as head of marketing called uh, DigNow. Yeah. Um, so we are currently uh, still in the fundraising phase uh, in the seed round and um, we are building the first prototype. Okay. Uh, what we're building is a new generation of analytics platform. So you can see it as a coin market cap, let's say on steroids. Okay. So if you're a uh, a bit familiar with crypto, you probably know coin market cap where you have all those data. Yeah. Uh, the thing is in crypto, we have a lot of data that are uh, on and off chain. Yeah. And if you want to make um, bridge or... Uh, yeah, if you want first also to analyze a project with all those data, yeah. uh, it's not possible at the moment because you need to go on many different platforms. So you will have some information on coin market cap, yeah. but if you want additional information on the tokenomics, the distribution of the token and the founding team, the investors, you might go to Messari. If you want some information on on-chain analysis, you will need to subscribe to another service. Oh, yeah and so on and so on. And if you want off-chain data, you will need to go to different platforms to get those signals as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, first, it costs a lot of money to subscribe to all those platforms. It's yeah. hard to aggregate all those data because yeah. it will require you to get the uh, API connection or aggregate everything in an Excel spreadsheet or something. Yeah. So you need technical um, skills as well. Yeah. And last but not least, all those data will come from different sources so they have different standard and yeah. you might have false data here and there mm. so the goal with dig is really like first to build this uh, very large database of on and on chain data okay and then build the front end that is dig now basically okay. where you will have analysis of crypto project and the ultimate goal is to have this made automatic and uh, constant uh, constantly scan the market okay. to have all the latest projects that are being analyzed uh, automatically okay, so, uh, so that's the ultimate goal so you okay. just go on the you have analysis that impartial and you can compare them compare different projects identify pattern of success patterns of failure and okay. uh, yeah filter with your own um, basically um, uh, preferences oh nice 
So, so for that, you are using a lot of AI. I presume. Oh yeah, that's true. I forgot to mention that. So <laughs> this yeah, I, uh, because the thing is why we call ourselves the next generation of analytics platform. And yeah, the first component of it is the, we have, we not using AI just as a buzzword. We are using AI technology as, um, yeah, uh, in the core of our platform. Okay. So we have AI model, AI scraper, AI validators that allows us to process data along the way with AI, uh, in an okay. automatic manner. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the end goal is to have AI analysis of crypto project. Okay. Because I uh, I have a, a question for the listeners. Um, so if uh, they want to analyze projects, that was my, my question. Uh, now they have to go on many different uh, platforms, website, etc., YouTube. And so with what you are building, they will be able to go just on Dig Now and have this information or is it more for professional? So, um, the, the, the platform will be accessible to everyone. Uh, there is, of course, a B2B part because the analysis we will provide requires still um, to understand of course. the market and finance and the, the level of details also is maybe not for, uh, let's say, Beginners, beginners or the DGEN who are gambling <laughs> on Memcoin, of course, okay. you, you don't or but that can still be useful for memcoin yeah. but uh, if you are a retailer and just yourself if you consider yourself as a let's say a skilled investor yeah. uh, with mid to long term perspective it's also for you uh, okay. the goal is to offer you services that are affordable yeah uh, you might not subscribe to the is subscription you will just pick up the analysis you want while some uh, b2b um, companies i mean businesses will require uh api access they will build their own dashboard okay. and so on so it will be like yes. a, a bit different on that hand okay so so um what are your main responsibilities in dig now and what excites you the most about dig now and crypto in general uh so first at dig now all my responsibilities basically everything around marketing so it can be like uh, helping to pitch vcs uh, okay. having pitch deck white paper up to date yeah. to the website social media um, I'm, I'm part of like let's say the the i'm not part of the funding team but i'm okay. with the working hands in hands with the exec team so are reviewing also tokenomics the product itself okay. what excites me the most is the web3 part because a part of the data will be collected by the community so uh, okay. it's also why we call it's our web3 component okay. that no one else have on the market at this stage okay so any users will be able to come to the platform and validate yeah. or provide and validate some data that are missing from okay. crypto project so it's like uh an incentives for them to to do it yeah and it's like a play to earn but uh yeah uh, you anywhere. can see it like uh, you have platform today such as galx or zilli mm -hmm. that let you create some social tasking mm -hmm. and reward people based on what they're uh how they are contributing to your project yeah we will do the same we'll have like some social component like follow us on next repost this type mm -hmm. of things and earn points but we will also build this kind of unique features that is providing data okay and thanks to ai we'll go through a process where we will validate this data and then the, this data will land in our analysis at the end okay. so that you don't miss anything so you we don't miss anything else. and um i think it's uh, important for crypto project for example, we will have crypto project that will be able to create their own task and reward yeah. the user with their own token. So yeah. we will have, we will, pro we will create tasks ourselves for some project. But as a crypto project, you can also come to dig now and say, look, I want to bring those specific data on my project. So I will incentivize the community to provide it. Come. And yeah. To come and provide those data. Okay. That's cool. Okay. And yeah, that's the most exciting part for me, like to create, have a real utility around the token and to be able to create a real economy on the platform with the token. Uh, okay. I think it's quite exciting. Yeah. Okay. So, so for the next question, uh, what excites you the most about crypto in general, not especially with Dignal? 
Uh, in crypto in general, I, I think it's the you know, innovation and yeah. the fact that you have so many people that are working hard to just uh, find new way to distribute wealth. Yeah. Of course, it's not perfect. I'm yeah. far, I'm not the one, I'm not like uh, in this utopia where I say crypto is the perfect solution, but yeah. uh, at least we have many teams that are trying hard to find new ways to build, you know, an economic uh, a viable economic system mm -hmm. and i think that's the most exciting uh, thing for me yeah. and we have all the tools to build it like we have the centralized ledger it's transparent and we have the token blockchains and so on so yeah but we are still uh, pretty early even though it's 2024 yeah i mean early yeah, it's uh, it depends. yeah it depends it's subjective <laughs> to me right uh, yeah. early it's like this do you, do you feel some project of like 10 years old and they don't do much some other project yeah. do better um yeah uh, i don't feel early okay. but i don't feel late i i think the present matter the most <laughs> it, like what yeah. we're doing today and yeah. what we plan to do that's the most important stuff yeah, for me that's, like that's where where that's... do we want to go all together yeah. uh, that's, a, that's a good advice because at least we can take back uh, our control on what's happening yeah so for for listeners i think it's it's great to to say just be present and do things with what you have, basically. Yeah. With the information. That yeah, we'll be late once Bitcoin worth uh, $1 million, I oh, guess. Yeah. Not so, financial so, advice. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you think that Bitcoin will go to $1 million I don't know. I, I have no clue. And um, mm. I think if it worth $1 million, it will be very bad for the global economy yeah. because it meant it that, mean yeah, that. big shift into... Uh, the, the yeah the crypto and basically uh, our uh, fiat currency will uh, tend it. to zero yeah so that would I, be I, pretty I bad i don't think that many people understand that but there is a lot of people who say that um, bitcoin has no has no top because fiat has no bottom and it's like if they keep printing like they do uh, yeah of course bitcoin can go to 1 million but what one million can buy you if if, if that's the case. It's yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, what would you buy with one million if a house is worth a hundred million dollars? Exactly. Like, that's that's a long debate. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> we won't get to that point, and we'll find a, a balance where, hopefully, fiat will be once again backed by you know uh, after Bretton Woods. It was decided that yeah. we don't back fiat with gold anymore. Yeah. Uh, maybe there is a way. Maybe it won't be Bitcoin, but we will just have stable coins that will be backed uh, yeah. or fiat backed stables. If, if, or if, I mean, that's the um, the term um, the the Bitcoin dollar system. So it's a new a new term now because if you have, like you said, stable coin that um, that I will say that they they buy bitcoin a lot so they are backed by bitcoins yeah but they are themselves uh buying a lot of us treasury so because they have to it's like yeah. the legal thing if they want to to um create one stable coin like one usdt they have to to buy a us treasury yeah so it's like it, it's kind of um uh, a fiat system backed by uh, bitcoin in in a, not in direct way but uh, I'm, I'm not a, an expert in the macroeconomy and, and um, but my view is like that there is a way to build a better uh, financial system, I guess. Uh, so let's see if, we, if Bitcoin is not the answer. I think my answer myself is we need to back not by thin air on oh, yeah. printing. Yeah. Like we need some rules and those rules have to be like not changed just yeah. because we need uh, economical growth to sustain GDP and so on. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's the Keynesian economics that you 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 studied in in your master degree, I I, I believe, and that's what I studied. Uh, they only teach uh, Keynesian economics. That's uh, the point. But uh, what what is great with Bitcoin is that you understand um, the Austrian economy. And I don't know if you you know those terms. Uh, not much, but uh, I'll I have a look will, for you, sure. You will, you will like you will like yeah. that. Yeah. So. It, it will be for another another episode. I yeah, think. I'll study but, uh, first and then we <laughs> can discuss, of course. Perfect. That was good. Thank you. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Uh, thanks for inviting me and hope we'll have uh, some follow up sessions to uh, discuss it more in a few months. Let's see where uh, we'll be. Yeah, perfect. Cool. Good.
I hope you found this session useful. If you want to embrace crypto assets with confidence, make sure you understand the risks you're up against. Thank you very much and see you next time.